OK, so in all of the examples that we've gone through uh, for partial fractions, what we've had is that the numerator has been uh, one, at least one, power shy of the power on the denominator. So if you've got an x squared in the denominator, you will have either a constant term in the numerator or a linear term. So, for example, um, you would have, if this was the fraction, for example, in the numerator you've either had 1 over x plus 1, x minus 3, or you've had something like x plus 2 uh, over x plus 1, x minus 3, or something like that. You haven't had x squared or an x cubed or whatever in the numerator, so any power of x that is the same as the highest power of x in the denominator, which is x squared in this case, um, or in this case you've got an x cubed over an x. So where the polynomial in the numerator is uh, the same or larger than the one in the denom denominator. Now, this seems like a strange thing to miss out, um, and it is really. Um, you know, uh, this is one of the very few criticisms that I would probably suggest in this topic that you wouldn't get examined on this. Um, so, but it is kind of a, just a very simple extension, an obvious one, uh, that is well worth knowing if you're then going to take mathematics onto degree level. So, how do we go about it? How do we write these as partial fractions in order, in these cases, to integrate them? So, in order to do that, you need to use polynomial division first, okay? Now, polynomial division isn't something we've looked at for quite a while, um, but is an incredibly useful skill. So, x squared over x plus 1, x minus 3. So, first of all, I'm going to write this as x squared over the expanded form, okay? So, x squared over x squared, uh, what is it, minus 2x minus 3, okay? So if you're going to use polynomial division, then we want x squared, so I use the grid method for this, so we're going to be dividing x, oh sorry, we're going to be dividing x squared by x squared minus 2x minus 3, Okay, we want x squared, so that would have to be 1. You'd have 1 lot of two, minus 2x, 1 lot of minus 3. Now, there's no t x's, singular linear terms, in the numerator, so we'd have to have 2x in order to cancel them out. And we don't have any constant term either, so that would have to be 3 in order to cancel it out. So, that's where we would stop, and we can then write this as the integral of 1 plus, this is your remainder, 2x plus 3 over the x squared minus 2x minus 3. So the x plus 1, x minus 3. And from there, you can then use partial fractions to expand this. Okay, so we'd then have um, 2x plus 3 over x plus 1, x minus 3 is equivalent to a over x plus 1 plus b over x minus 3. So 2x plus 3 is the same as a lots of x minus 3 plus b over uh, b times x plus 1, sorry. So if we let x be minus 1 to start off with, we've got minus 2 plus 3, so 1. And then we've got minus 1 take away 3, so minus 4, so minus 4a. So a is minus a quarter. And if we let x be 3, then we get 2 lots of 3, so 6 plus 3 is 9. So we're going to get 3 plus 1, so 4b. And so b is 9 quarters. So we can now write this as the integral of 1 plus, uh, sorry, minus a quarter over x plus 1 plus 9 quarters 
over x minus 3 dx. Okay, get rid of the working. And then you can integrate it. And so this integrates to x minus a quarter log x plus 1 plus 9 quarters log x minus 3 plus c. Okay, and that's how we would go about it. So you would use polynomial division first and then partial fractions in order to get there. Now, for number two, we're not really going to need partial fractions, although we are kind of splitting it up into partial fractions, but we're not going to need the process so much. We're just going to do the polynomial division bit. So x cubed plus 1 divided by x plus 2. So the x plus 2 goes down the left-hand side. We need an x cubed, okay? So we'd have to have x squared there. x squared times 2, so 2x squared. Now, uh, we don't have any x squared to the numerator, so we'd have to have minus 2x squared. So we're going to have minus 2x there. Minus 2x times 2 is minus 4x. Um, minus 4x, we don't have any linear term there, so we'd have to have 4x here to cancel it out. We'd have to have 4 there, so 4 lots of 2 is 8. We've actually got 1, so we'd have to have uh, minus 7. And that is the remainder. So we could write this as the integral of x squared minus 2x plus 4 minus 7 over x plus 2. That remainder, that bit that couldn't quite divide by x plus 2. And so this would be x cubed over 3, take away x squared plus 4x minus 7 log x plus 2 plus c. Okay, so that is how we can use polynomial division and partial fractions in order to integrate things that look like this. Now, as I said, this is an extension, okay, so you won't have to do this uh, in the exam. However, uh, there was an example um, of a, an integration problem from one year where I can't remember exactly what it was off the top of my head, but... What it required you to do was actually expand the bracket in the numerator and then divide through, and it turns into a core 2 uh, integration problem. But um, many students uh, tried integration by substitution, and it led to an integral where you had something like x squared over x plus 2, or something like that. Uh, in which case you would have to have used polynomial division in order to integrate it from there. So be aware that there are integrals that won't be tested on the exam, but are there and very close to what we're currently doing and using all the skills that we know, uh, which are also accessible and uh, we can actually do ourselves. Okay? So, don't, uh, you know, if you're going on to a mathematical degree program, it is worth knowing these skills and have them well practiced uh, for the analysis side um, of degree mathematics.